When making videos like this, obviously there will be people that are disappointed with how their team ranks. All 30 NBA teams will be mentioned, and not every team was a winner in this year's 2021 offseason. I think it's important to know that the biggest losers were basically teams that didn't make any moves. Because in the NBA, which is ever evolving, there are obviously teams who make moves and they seemingly get better on paper. When in reality, when the NBA season starts again, those teams may actually not do very well and teams that didn't make any moves may actually do better. So it's not to say that those teams who didn't make any moves will be bad next year, but it's hard to rank them any higher than a team that made moves. And I believe a team that didn't add anything inherently gets worse simply because other teams get better. But obviously, this is all subject to change, and this is just how it is from my perspective. Without further ado, this goes in alphabetical order, and we're starting off with the Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks finally have a team that is good enough on paper to be a playoff team. Whether it's the 6th, 7th or 8th seed, you expect the Atlanta Hawks this year to be in the playoffs. Not only do they get Clint Capella back after trading for him last season, but Trey Young is entering his third year. And they also added guys like Bogdanovich, who was actually meant to be a part of the Bucks, but obviously that didn't work out. And he's going to be a part of Atlanta, which I think is a great fit. In addition, Danilo Gallinari, sure he's 32 years old and they did maybe overpay for him, but he's a really great stretch four that can play multiple positions and he's a guy that I think fits well alongside Trey Young, Clint Capella and obviously their young pieces in Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter and John Collins. And Trey Young can learn a lot from Rajan Rondo. I'm going to rank the Hawks offseason at a B plus. I believe they did get some quality players but they also made some questionable moves in terms of contracts so we're going to see how they go next year. But definitely a step in the right direction. Then we go to the Boston Celtics. The Celtics were an odd team going into the offseason. Many believed that Danny Ainge would be on the phone most of the offseason looking for trades for Gordon Hayward, and even Kemba Walker was on the trade table. They've obviously got their two future all-stars in Jason Tatum and obviously Jalen Brown, and they did give Jason Tatum a contract extension, which was very well deserved. But they lost Gordon Hayward. Not that he was a major piece to this team, simply because he hasn't been the same since his injury, but they did add Tristan Thompson, who I think was a great complementary piece since they did lack front court size, and adding him ensures more rebounding and provides second chance points. But all in all, I don't think the Celtics comprehensively look a lot different from last season. I just think they'll play better simply because Tatum and Brown are one year older, but in terms of the actual off-season moves, I rank them at a C+. The Brooklyn Nets didn't really need to make any moves. They're obviously getting two All-Stars back, and obviously they did re-sign Joe Harris, so this team is not only filled with two star powerhouse players in Kevin Durant and Kyrie, but they've also got depth with their bench, Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, Joe Harris, DeAndre Jordan. It's a really solid team on paper. We're going to see how they can all mesh together. I wouldn't be surprised if they did trade away some of their bench players to try and get that third All-Star. We saw they were going after Bradley Beal, but in that same sense, they didn't do anything special during this offseason, but I think bringing back Joe Harris, even though they did re-sign him on a pretty big contract, and adding Jeff Green, who also helps with that small ball five, and he's also played with Kevin Durant previously. But because of last season's offseason, which was obviously an a getting Kyrie and KD, they didn't need to do anything this offseason, so I'm just going to rank them at a C+. Next, we have the Charlotte Hornets. And the Charlotte Hornets are a very, very interesting team because obviously they drafted LaMelo Ball, the new face of the franchise. And obviously, if you followed this channel for a while and you can tell by my accent, I'm from Australia. And that's where LaMelo Ball played all of this year for the Illawarra Hawks. I was able to watch him each and every game. And this guy is definitely the face of a franchise. He can improve in multiple aspects of his game. Definitely defensively, he's got a lot to work on. His shooting ability, he's got a lot to work on. But he's a six foot eight point guard who can actually play point guard. He is no joke. He's an incredible offensive talent. He can finish with contact. He's arguably the best passer in the NBA without even playing a game. And because he is six foot eight and he's building size, he can actually improve on the defensive end and become a similar player to Lonzo, who's very good on the defensive end. So just through the draft alone, they finally got their new franchise player in LaMelo Ball. 
But they also added Gordon Hayward. And Gordon Hayward is such an interesting player because Utah Jazz Gordon Hayward was an all-star. Is he able to be the Utah Jazz Gordon Hayward that he once was? Because in Boston, he had to play alongside Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, Kemba Walker, Kyrie Irving. There were players that were taking his shots away from him. In Charlotte, he is going to probably be the main guy. And I think this team is looking for that eighth seed. I don't think they can get any better than a seventh or eighth seed. And that's just because they are in the Eastern Conference. If they were in the West, there'd be no chance they'd even make the playoffs. But it's just a very odd team. And it's a hard team to rank because they definitely did overpay for Gordon Hayward which is why I'm going to put them down at a C+. They obviously got LaMelo Ball, which put them up to a B, B-, and then the Gordon Hayward addition put them down a little bit for me, just because of that contract, and it's a long-term contract. I just didn't see him fitting in with this young Charlotte Hornets team. To me, it doesn't make a lot of sense, so I'm going to put them back down to a C+, but they're going to be better than last season, most likely. So if MJ just wants to see success, they're probably going to have minimal, but playoff success, most likely. Then we've got the Chicago Bulls, and I'm not going to beat around the bush. They took a roll of the dice on Patrick Williams at pick number five. I'm not entirely sure how good he'll be in the NBA. It is a roll of the dice. It's one of those things that if it pays off, it will definitely pay off. If it doesn't, they've wasted a top five pick. In saying that, the Chicago Bulls need something. They might as well take the gamble, but to me, they didn't have a good offseason at all, and that's simply because they didn't sign anyone, nor did they really lose anyone, and... That's a D plus for me. If you don't do anything, it's hard to rank you. I don't think they got any better, so I'm gonna have to rank them at a D plus. Next, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. They added JaVale McGee, they lost Tristan Thompson, they didn't really make any moves. I'm gonna also rank them at a D plus. Next, we have the Dallas Mavericks, and the Dallas Mavericks are such an interesting team because Luka Doncic has the ability to be an MVP in this league. He's a guy that in just his second year took the league by storm, and the way that he played in the playoffs against the Los Angeles Clippers in that series was incredible. Even without Kristaps Porzingis, you know that this guy is the future of the NBA. They didn't make any notable signings, but what they did do was get some defense on this team. Seth obviously is a part of the 76ers, Jay Rich is now a part of the Dallas Mavericks, and I think for both teams it really works out. For Philly, Seth is a better shooter, and for the Dallas Mavericks, Jay Rich is a great defender. I watched him in Miami all the time as the leader for our team when we didn't have a great squad, and I think Jay Rich is a guy that can really compliment Luka, and I think the role that he'll play in Dallas fits far better for Josh Richardson than the role he played in Philadelphia. He can even be the third scorer on this team, but he's also just a lockdown defender, which is more suited to the way he plays. In addition, they wanted wing defenders and they were able to get them either through the draft with Josh Green, who is an Australian and I love the way he plays. They got James Johnson, a veteran guy that is actually just a very serviceable player. And I think for what the Dallas Mavericks could do, they did what they could do and they got better during this offseason. They also re-signed Willie Colley-Stein. So I'm going to give the Dallas Mavericks a B plus for this year's offseason. The Denver Nuggets didn't really get much better, nor did they get much worse. They lost Jeremy Grant, which definitely hurt them, but they also added Jermichael Green, who was a good player for the Clippers last season. They re-signed Paul Millsap, so they didn't get much worse, didn't get much better. But for what they could do with the limited amount of cap space they have, they're already a competitive team in the Western Conference. I'm going to give them a B. Then we've got the Detroit Pistons. I'm not going to get into the Detroit Pistons because I don't know what the hell they did. They lost Christian Wood, who that was the only bright spot for this team. They paid Mason Plumlee so much money, $25 million. I just don't know why they did that. Jeremy Grant's a nice addition, but he's really only a nice addition for like a playoff team. The Pistons are not a playoff team. They're going to probably look to trade Blake Griffin eventually as well. I don't know what they did, and I'm going to rank them at a D plus, which is the worst you can get. Next, we have the Golden State Warriors, and obviously with the injury of Klay Thompson, which is so unfortunate, a second year in a row that he's had a major injury is just devastating, but the Warriors as a team did really well during this offseason, and I think for what they could do, they did exceptionally well. They were able to replace Klay Thompson with Kelly Oubre, which obviously you can't replace Klay Thompson, but Kelly Oubre is 24, he brings youth, athleticism, a great defender, and he can even shoot the ball. He's going to be around an 18 to 20 point per game scorer. Can he play alongside Wiggins? They're kind of similar, but I'm not sure how that's going to work. But Steph Curry, Kelly Oubre, Draymond Green, and they were able to draft James Wiseman. So 
This team is going to be nice, in my opinion, going into next season, even without Clay Thompson. With Clay Thompson, they'd be one of the best teams, in my opinion, but without Clay Thompson, I'm not sure how they're going to run, but Kelly Oubre is not a bad replacement, and then they also added Kent Bazemore, a previous Golden State Warrior who's a really good 3 and D player for this team coming off the bench. I really like what they did, and I'm going to give them an A- minus for this offseason. Next, we have the Houston Rockets. The Houston Rockets are such a strange team because they were obviously running the small ball last year and then this year they go out and get Christian Wood, DeMarcus Cousins, two big men. I'm not sure if they're going to make a trade, what they're going to do, but adding Christian Wood is a nice pickup for this team depending on what they do. I think Christian Wood alone is just a really solid player and DeMarcus Cousins, they may as well take the plunge on him considering that he could be a decent player. He was one of the best big men in the NBA, if not the best big man in the NBA when healthy. It's obviously been a few years since then, but I don't think they did as bad as many expected, and I'm actually going to give them a B-. The Indiana Pacers didn't really add anyone, nor did they really lose anyone, so I'm just going to give them a C-. Next, we have the Los Angeles Clippers, and I actually do think they got better. Sure, they did lose Montrez Harrell, Landry Shamet, who was a decent shooter for this team, and they also lost Jermichael Green, but they added Sergi Barker, who, in my opinion, fits better than Harrell on this team. We've seen what he's been able to do on the defensive end, and he is a better defender than Harrell. And then offensively, he's able to stretch the floor a little bit better than Harrell as well. So he probably fits better for this Clippers team. And then Luke Kennard is just a very good shooter. He's similar to Landry Shamit, but obviously a decent replacement for him. So I think that that's actually better for this Clippers team. And they actually are a better team going to the next season than they were this season, in my opinion. But they're not extensively better. And they also didn't add a point guard, which they were looking to add. So I'm just going to give them a B for this offseason. Next, we have the Los Angeles Lakers, and I've already made a separate video for the Los Angeles Lakers on the channel a few days ago. I think they were clear winners. They still have the ability to trade away Kyle Kuzma with somebody that's more of a better fit for this Lakers team, and they also added Marc Gasol from Toronto, which is a really good player to add. I think they were clear winners, and it's an A-plus for me. This Los Angeles Lakers team got so much better. They added Wesley Matthews, a great three-point shooter and a great defender in replacement for Danny Green, but everyone that they lost, they got better players back. Montrez is a better player than JaVale, Wesley Matthews is a better player than Danny Green, Dennis Schroeder is a better player than Rondo, and losing Avery Bradley wasn't too big considering he didn't actually play in the bubble and they won an NBA championship, and then Marcus Gasol for Dwight Howard, they're pretty similar players except Marcus Gasol's ability to shoot the outside shot probably helps this Lakers team even more. So NBA champions got better, an A plus for me. The Memphis Grizzlies didn't really add anyone noticeable, nor did they lose anyone noticeable either. I'm going to give them a C-. minus. The Miami Heat, obviously coming off an NBA Finals appearance, they weren't able to do a lot in this offseason. They don't have major cap space just yet. That's looking for 2021, where they're looking to get a star player. This year, though, they added some really good role players. Avery Bradley's a great 3 and D guy for the Miami Heat, who can really play well for this team and fit straight in. Mo Harkless, similar player. They lost Jay Crowder, so he's a six foot eight long player, can play defense, can hit the open shot. He'll fit in for this team. And they also re-signed Bam, Goran Dragic, and they also signed Myers Leonard for quite a noticeable contract, but people know Pat Riley's onto something. He's probably just gonna be a part of a trade, because he's able to match the contracts with an all-star. Because you know Miami's going to try and get someone, whether that's Oladipo, Bradley Beal, Joel Embiid, someone. The Miami Heat are looking to get someone, and to make the contracts work, that's how they're going to make it work. With Myers Leonard's contract, along with some young assets. So whilst they didn't do anything special, what they did do was solid, and they just came in off an NBA Finals appearance, so I'm going to give them a B. Next, we have the Bucks, and the Bucks needed to make some noticeable moves considering that they obviously are trying to keep Giannis and also still compete next year. They were able to get Drew Holiday, who's a really, really underrated player. Losing out on Bogdanovich, though, really hurt this team. I would have given the Bucks a nice ranking. I would have given them an A- minus to B+, plus, but because they weren't able to get Bogdanovich, and Drew Holiday's a good player, but they did still give up three first-round picks, I'm going to give them a B. The Minnesota Timberwolves, I thought they could have potentially tried to trade away that pick. You've got D'Angelo Russell, you've got Carl Anthony Towns. They want to start competing for a playoff push, and I'm not sure if Anthony Edwards, who's a rookie, will be able to get them over the line. I'm just going to say that the Minnesota Timberwolves got a C. I like the addition of Anthony Edwards, but I just think if you're Minnesota, you want to start making the playoffs considering Carl Anthony Towns is there, D'Angelo Russell is there, you need to start winning. Next, we have the New Orleans Pelicans, a very weird addition of Steven Adams, a guy that you can't really see him playing very well alongside Zion Williamson because 
they're just two really big players. Although, it's the intimidation factor that you have Zion and Steven Adams setting picks and screens and that is tough. Those are two of the heaviest players in the league, two of the strongest players in the league. They added Eric Bledsoe. They lost Drew Holiday. How do you really rank this team? Of course, they re-signed Brandon Ingram, but I'm just going to say they're just mediocre. I'm going to rank them at a B-. minus. I like the addition of Steven Adams, and I just don't know if they got much better, though, going into next year, but they don't need to. They're going to see how their young players play, and they're going to see a full, healthy season out of Zion, hopefully, so that's when we'll see how this Pelicans team goes next year, but... I think B- minus is okay for this team. The New York Knicks, they didn't really make any major moves. They didn't add anything special. They got Obi Toppin in the draft, who is a New Yorker. I like him. I think he's going to be solid, but he's another power forward that this team really doesn't need any more of. I'm going to rank them at a C- minus because I just don't see them doing any better than they did last year. The Oklahoma City Thunder, very, very different team going into next year that they had this year. They've lost their main players in Chris Paul, Gallinari, Stephen Adams, Dennis Schroeder, Noel, Ferguson. They basically lost everybody that they had last year besides Shea Gilgis Alexander. So that team didn't get any better, but they were able to add in Al Horford, who's just a player that will be on this team. Trevor Reza, a player that will be on this team. Just veteran guys that can help Shea, but they're not going to win. But what they are looking forward to is a ton of picks in the future. They made so many trades, including pick swaps and picks, and they're just going to be crazy. They've got 18 first round picks by from now until 2027. I just think that's an incredible way to set up your future, and I'm going to give them a ranking of a B-, minus because they didn't add anything, but because of the picks, which are unknown how good they'll be, a B-, minus I think, is a very solid place to be in. The Orlando Magic, they didn't lose anyone, they didn't add anyone, they just stayed the same, and I think, for me, that just means they're at a C-. minus. The Philadelphia 76ers, I spoke a little bit about them before. I think they got better. They lost the big contract of Al Horford, Jay Richardson's contract. They also lost that, but he also wasn't a great fit for this team. I think adding in Seth Curry is a much better fit. And then Terrence Ferguson is a really underrated player. A good guy to have on your team. He's a great athletic player, 3 and D player. I think he fits really well. And I think it's a great year to see how Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid will play alongside some good shooters on the outside. Dwight Howard's veteran presence will be there. He's a great backup center to have. He can teach Embiid some good things on the defensive end, which Embiid needs to work on. So I think for what they could do, they did do some very very good things and I'm actually going to give them one of the highest rankings. I'm going to give them at a B plus for this year. I think they just did what they could do and they got better and I think on paper it doesn't look like a better team but in reality on the court I think they'll be better and I think they're really going to push a lot of teams next year in the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. The Phoenix Suns also, they made a major move in adding Chris Paul and Jay Crowder, who's a very solid 3 and D guy to have on your team alongside obviously DeAndre Aiden and Devin Booker. It's a guy that you didn't want to lose in Kelly Oubre, but in the same sense, adding Chris Paul is a veteran player that can hopefully get this team into the playoffs. I think Devin Booker's going to take that next step. We saw what he could do in the bubble, and I think DeAndre Aiden, he's a guy that will really cement himself as one of the better centers in the league next year, and I think adding Chris Paul just helps this team get a lot better straight away. So I'm going to give this team an A-. They're not going to be a championship team, but they at least can get closer to making the playoffs, and that's all they really need to do to see Devin Booker and DeAndre Aiden become future stars in this league, and a really nice one-two punch. Similarly, I have the Portland Trailblazers as a major winner this year. I've got them ranked at an A. I think they did really well. Derek Jones fits really well in this team. Robert Covington is the perfect piece for this team. And Ennis Kanta is a decent replacement for Hassan Whiteside. They got some really good defense first forwards to complement CJ and Dame. And they do a lot better on the defensive end that Melo did. And they also still have Melo for the offensive end too. So I like what they did a lot. Then we've got the Sacramento Kings. They didn't really do anything. They were able to re-sign De'Aaron Fox, so I'm just going to rank them out of C-. Obviously, getting Hassan Whiteside doesn't do anything. They also lost Bogdanovich, so it was just a win-lose, win-lose kind of offseason for them, so I'm going to rank them at a C-. Same with the San Antonio Spurs. They didn't really add anyone special, nor did they really lose anyone special. So it's a C- minus for them. The Toronto Raptors, I have them ranked at a C- minus as well. They were able to re-sign Fred Van Fleet, but they lost Serge and Marcus Gasol, two players that were really instrumental for this team. And adding Aaron Baines is okay. Alex Len is okay. DeAndre Membry, okay, but nothing special. So I'm going to also rank them at a C-. minus. 
The Utah Jazz, they were able to re-sign Jordan Clarkson, Donovan Mitchell, two players that were really instrumental last year to this team. They added Derek Favors, a former Utah Jazz player. I don't think they did anything special, but I think what they did do was get a big man that they needed. Um, and I think that it's important that they did that, but a C plus for me is where I rank them. Then we have the Washington Wizards. They re-signed Davis Bertans, an $80 million contract. He's a really good player. I don't know if he's worth $80 million though. And I think the Wizards are a weird team because they will eventually make a trade. I think you can count on that happening. Either it's going to be John Ball or Bradley Bill. I do like their draft pick. I think he's going to complement Rui pretty well. And those are the two players that they're looking to build on. So I think they just did okay. Nothing special. I'm going to rank them at a C. And that is every team. That's every team that I've ranked them. Here's all the teams on your screen right now, the way that I've ranked them. I want to hear, though, what you believe down below. How did you rank each team's offseason? You can let me know down below. You can let me know your favorite team. I would love to hear what you think. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you guys in my next one. I am out. Peace.